right, today we got analyzing graphs of functions and relations. We're not going to graph a whole lot as much as we're going to analyze what's already there, so don't freak out too much here. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is you can use graphs to estimate values of functions. Now, this problem says the function f of x equals blah, 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 approximates the profit at a toy company where x is marketing cost and f of x or y is the profit. Um, both costs and profits are measured in tens of thousands. So when you look at this, that 50 right there is really 50 times 10,000, which would be that's 500,000. That's really a million. Down here, that's 20,000, 40,000, 60,000. So part A, use the graph to estimate the profit when marketing costs are 30,000. Uh, 30,000 would be you know right here. That's the 30,000. So if I go up there, it looks like about a little bit over a million. So let's say that not quite a million. That'd be a million. Two five, so let's say about a million fifty estimated wise. And to find out for sure is what I would do is I would take my calculator and I'd plug thirty thousand into, or at least thirty. I'd plug, or actually thirty, thirty thousand into the x's and see if I got close to that, which I'm going to. I'm not going to do that right now. Part B: Use the graph to estimate marketing costs when the profit is one point two five. So that's one million. One point two five would actually be right here. So I'm going to go over there until I hit right there. It looks like, right, that's, looks like the vertex of my parabola, which is at the 5. And remember, 5 is, um, stands for 10,000. So about $50,000 in marketing cost. And what, what's neat about that picture, most people think the more you advertise, the more you get. But what happens is that's the ultimate right there. You know, they can spend 50000 they're going to make this much profit. Once they get past that, their profits start going down. So you can actually oversaturate your advertising if you're not careful. Next one, you can use graphs to find the domain and range. And this is how you do that. The domain is how far left and right your graph goes, and your range is how far up and down your graph goes. So if I'm looking at this one, let's go domain first. Um, it's going, it looks like, um, this, it goes from here, which is, um, and the domain is your x's, one, two, three, root three. Then it goes left, and it's going to keep going left forever. So if we do like we did yesterday, we could do a couple of ways. We could say it like domain is negative infinity to positive three, and that's probably the best way to do it. Range is how far up and down your graph goes. This one goes up to positive two, and then it goes up that arrow going down, it's going down forever. So we would say the range is from negative infinity to positive two. You could also do set builder notation there like we did yesterday, but I think for our purposes on that problem, that's probably the best way to go is just interval notation. Um, you can find x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Obviously, you know what those are. X-intercepts where it crosses the x-axis, the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. And one thing about those you need to remember, the x-intercepts always have a y-coordinate of zero, and the y-intercept always has an x-coordinate of zero. So let's try a couple here. This says use the graphs to find the x and y-intercepts. So on part A, the x-intercept looks like it's at 2. So I'm going to put x-intercept, intercept at 2. The y-intercept looks like it's going to be at 4. It says to prove that algebraically, the y-intercept is really easy because you just put 0 in for x. If I put a 0 in for x is there, that would be 0 minus 0 plus 4, which is 4, which is what I put. The x-intercept, what you would do is you put 0 in for y to prove it algebraically. So it would be 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. And if you were to factor that, you would get x minus 2 squared. Or, you know, you're going to end up getting x equals 2, which is what we got over there. Part B, just looking at it, uh, the x-intercept looks like it's at 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. So the x-intercepts look like 1 and negative 5. The y-intercept would be at negative 1. And, of course, it says prove algebraically. The y is always the easy one because you just put 0 in for x. 0 plus 2 is 2. The absolute value is 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. So the y is negative 1. To find the x, you would put the 0 in for y, and then that wants you to solve it. So it would look like like this. You move the 3 over. x plus 2 is 3. Um, that because it's absolute value, there are two answers. You do x plus 2 is 3, and x plus 2 is negative 3. Move the 2 over, you get 1. Move that 2 over, and you get negative 5. The same thing we got just by looking. So I want you to see, even if you do it algebraically or graphically, you get the same thing. This one says using graphs to find zeros of a function. Zero means x-intercept. That's what it is. A zero is an x-intercept. So the problem here says use the graph of f of x equals x cubed minus x to approximate the zeros 
Uh, of course, you can't really tell exactly sometimes because of how thick we draw our lines, but it looks to me like our zeros are going to be at, um, at x equals negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And then it says to show algebraically. Anytime you're trying to find x-intercepts again, you put 0 in for y, which will give me this. Um, you can factor that by taking out an x, which will give you x squared minus 1. If you factor the x squared minus 1, get x plus 1, x minus 1. So your zeros, just as we thought up here, would be 0, negative 1, and positive 1, which is what we had. All right, they're going to ask you for symmetry. Now, you're probably going to need to stop the video and get these in your notes, probably. Uh, test for symmetry. A graph is symmetric with the x-axis. It's kind of weird. It's kind of backwards of what you would, you would think. The x-axis, if you can replace y with negative y, and you get the same thing, nothing happens. For example, y would be squared. If y is squared and you put in a negative y, it's still going to be just y squared. Um, a graph is symmetric with the y-axis if you can plug in negative x for positive x, and you get the same equation. And then the weirdest one is the bottom one. A graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. If you can replace the x with negative x and y with negative y, and you get the same equation. Now, you may not know what that looks like, but if a graph is symmetric with the origin, model well, number three, that means you can turn your graph upside down. Like you could graph something on your calculator, turn your screen upside down, it would look exactly the same. Number one, if it's symmetric with the uh, x-axis, it would be something like, I don't know, sideways parabola does that. Or if you flipped it, it would be the same. Symmetric with the y-axis might be an absolute value graph that looks like that. Or if you reflect it across the y-axis, it still looks the same. It's symmetric. Your axis is your line of symmetry. All right, this one says use the graph of each equation to test for symmetry. So look at the graph and see what you think. And then we got to, of course, they're going to make you confirm it. So the first one says y equals x squared plus 2. Obviously, it looks like it's symmetric. Uh, let's say it this way. Let's say it has y axis symmetry. That may be the best way, to, the shortest way to say it. Y axis symmetry. Um, then it says confirm your answer. Well, support it numerically. What that means is plug in a number in for x and a, and a negative number and see if you get the same thing. For example, if I plug in negative 2 right there, it'd be 4 plus 2, which is 6. And if I plug in a negative 2 in for x, I'm pointing at it. Negative 2 in for x, you would get positive 4 plus 2, which is 6. So you could do that. They probably want you to write that down. I'm not going to write it up here just for time's sake. Then it says confirm algebraically. Algebraically means if I plugged in, if I plug in a negative x, where that x is, and square it, would I get the same equation? Yes, because it would, it would turn back because I'm squaring a negative. It's going to turn positive. Okay, part B looks like it has origin symmetry because if I turn that graph upside down, it's going to look the same. So we're going to call it origin symmetry. Now, that means I can plug in a negative number for x and y and get the same thing. So let's say, first of all, it has to equal negative 6. So let's say I started with 3 times negative 2. Now, if you change both signs, do you still get negative 6? And the answer is yes. So that's how you would do it numerically. Algebraically, what I would do is I would say, okay, if x times, having x times y, if I put in a negative x times that a negative y, does that change the equation at all? And the answer is no, because negative times a negative is still positive. So it's the same thing. That's why it has origin symmetry. Now, two more words, and we're done. Even, an even function is when it's symmetric with the y, when you can use your x's, when you can put a negative x in for positive x. The odd is when it's symmetric to the origin. So you can tell even odd two ways, one by graphing or one uh, by plugging in the negative values. So let's check these out real quick. Uh, graph each function, determine whether the function is even, odd, or neither, or confirm algebraically. I didn't have my calculator ready, so I'm going to talk to you for about three seconds, just kind of ramble here while it comes up, and maybe five seconds or seven seconds. Um, I'm videoing this on a Friday afternoon. It's about 28 degrees outside. It's freezing. The wind's blowing. There it is. Okay. All right. Let's clear that off. I'm going to go to y equals and just graph this first one. Um, first of all, my stat plots on. I just noticed I'm going to turn that off so it won't mess us up. Turn it off first. There we go. Now I go to y equals. I'm going to punch that one in. x squared minus 4x plus 4. And graph it. And then zoom 6. Zoom 6 when I graph it. I'm looking at that one. Looks like it has no, it's not symmetric to either one. So it's not even or odd or neither. 
um, if, it, if it was, it would be either origin symmetry or x, y axis symmetry, and it's neither one. Now, this says algebraically. For algebraically, what I would do is I would come over here and I would plug in a negative x. If I plug in a negative x, that's still going to be x squared. But if I put a negative x right there, that's going to be plus 4x. So what happens is that's not the same equation. And let me give you a little hint here. When you're plugging in a negative x or a negative y, the only signs that are going to change are the odd exponents. That's all, just the odd exponents. Okay, let's take a look at the second one. That says x squared minus 4. So I'm going to go back to y equals, clear out what I just had in there, and let's go x squared minus 4, hit enter, graph it this time. Definitely looks like y axis symmetry, which means it would be even. Now the rule for even is, if I can plug in a negative x where the positive x is, then it's even. So if I plug a negative x in right there, you know, right here, it would be negative x squared minus 4, which is the same thing as that. It's the same thing, same equation, which means that one was even. Okay, last one, and we will be done with the video. So go to y equals, clear out the last one x to the third power minus 3x squared minus x plus 3 oops did not know I was doing that let's go back up and start all over again sorry about that x to the third power my calculator got an update the other day and it started doing that minus 3x squared I'm not used to it yet minus x plus 3 just another one we may not ever get done minus x plus 3. There we go. I'm going to graph it. Alright, looking at that, it's definitely not symmetric with the y. If I turn a calculator upside down, upside down, I don't think it's going to work either. Um, let's, let's look algebraically just to make sure. Now if it's, the only one I'm worried about is origin symmetry, which means it's going to, it could possibly be odd. Alright, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I plug in a negative y, and I change the signs on the odd exponents, the odd exponents only. It would look like this. Now, if I go through and change the signs again, just to make it because it was a positive, that'd be change that sign. Then you change all the signs just to see what happens. See if you get the same thing as you started with. So if you look at this and this, what messes it up obviously is the x squared. It's hard to get an odd function when you have an x squared in there. And also when you have a constant at the end, it's kind of hard to. I forgot to change that sign too. I forgot to change that sign. All right, so quite a few words today. You may want to go back and watch a little bit of this again or at least get the words down. Make sure you have them in your notes. Stop it and get those in your notes. And we'll work on it, of course, in class tomorrow. I'll see you then.